Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Roger Testrudi. And today we're very pleased to have one of our, well, frankly, one of our top elected officials and a very important department head in Sheboygan County, Sheriff Todd Preview. Welcome, Todd. Thank you. It hasn't been that long since Todd's joined our ranks as sheriff. It'll be two years here in, in January, though he was just telling me off the air, 23 years in law enforcement. So a pretty impressive track record. And of course, Sheriff, a lot of folks are well aware of your track record here in Sheboygan, Sheboygan County. Please begin by just sharing a little bit about your background and, and uh, you know, your law enforcement career. Well, um Shortly after uh, high school, I decided to get into the uh, criminal justice as major, went to UW-Milwaukee and uh, tried the Army, and uh, they refused me because at the time I uh, was on a medication and they wouldn't take me, so I uh, went on the route of going to school and uh, continued uh, uh, through, um, you know, uh, pretty honed in on, you know, law enforcement is what I really wanted to do. and got a little antsy and, and had uh, some frustration in getting into law enforcement back in the late 80s was very difficult. Um, so I decided to uh, take some advice from my uncle who's an investigator for Dallas Police Department in Texas and went down there and they got me through the, the uh, application process fairly quick and uh, spent three years down there shortly after that. And then um, while I was down there, I had every intention of actually coming back to my my hometown, and this is where I really wanted to to uh, end up having a full career and raising my family. So it it worked out quite well that way. Um, so three years in Dallas. Three years in Dallas, and then uh, Sheboygan Police Department was 18 years, and just finishing up two years here. And uh, the majority of my career was with community policing in Sheboygan, which I think really gave me the notoriety with with name recognition and things of that nature. That really gave me, I think, uh, an optimal opportunity to run for sheriff and be able to do some of the things that I, I wanted to, to be a part of. And well, uh, my career kind of dictated to me that probably to really fulfill what I like to see and accomplish in law enforcement, I, my best route would be running for sheriff. So. Now it was City PD in Dallas? City Police Department? City Police Department, yeah. So city experience today huge uh, community like Dallas, then obviously oh, yeah. the city police department in Sheboygan, now Sheboygan County. Out of curiosity, particularly between Dallas and the environment here, what, what were some of the key takeaways or, or differences? Wow. Um, the, probably the, the sense of, of um, quality of life, let me put it that way, in a personal level. Uh, I would not want to raise a family in Dallas. Um, uh, it's it's tough to be a kid down there. When I worked uh, Oak Lawn, you didn't see kids playing outside. You certainly didn't see them on the sidewalk. They were all within the courtyard of the apartment complex. Um, here, well, there's kids riding big wheels up and down the sidewalks, and the kids are riding in their bikes to the park. Well, you, you just didn't see that down there. Uh, the types of crime certainly more violent. Um, so definitely it's it's a quality of life that I see as a huge difference. Now I went down there with family uh, spring break uh, two years ago. Things have really changed because of partnerships and community policing. The area that I used to work is so different uh, that uh, it actually makes me feel real good that they were able to turn around an area that led the community actually in crime in some areas, especially burglaries and assaults and things of that nature, and be a prospering, oh, vibrant uh, community within Dallas. And right. It was really neat to actually see that. So I know community policing works when you work in partnership. Excellent. Excellent. And clearly now, you know, a good part of your career in Sheboygan, now as sheriff in Sheboygan County, what do you see as some of the key challenges we face as a community in, in law enforcement or, your, or key challenges you have as an individual working in the Sheboygan Sheriff's Department? I'd have to say that, you know, the, the thing that probably comes to mind right off the get-go when we bring up this subject matter uh, has been just echoed at a conference that I just came from with Badger State Sheriffs, and that is the uh, growing problem with heroin. 
uh, saw this as a community policing officer uh, talking to various groups in the community, getting phone calls, hey, I, we've got a family member that's got this problem. And we knew long ago already that the growing problem with prescription medication was going to end up leading us into a problem with heroin. And that's what we're starting to see actually across the state. Um, just met with 60 sheriffs out of 72 were present and we're all in agreement that we're seeing an escalation in heroin use basically because it's more readable and cheaper. So it's, it, that really alarms me. How do you, you know, if Roger or I are walking down the street and someone's using heroin or one of your deputies uh, are going on patrol or community policing and, and see someone on heroin, what type, types of traits or characteristics do you look for? I, you know, I guess you're looking for those that are probably, um, there's, I guess it's gonna look a little different depending on the individual and at what stage during their high they're at, you know. Right. Uh, certainly we're not seeing people overdosing uh, out on park benches or anything like that or, or passing out on the street. I think what we're seeing is they're doing this more in-house, behind closed doors. Um, am aware that uh, users, especially new users, uh, first time users uh, have been using this with another person and they have Narcan available. So in case they overdose, they're able to bring them back with the use of Narcan. So we're not seeing this out in the public. It's not like Amsterdam where these people are, you know, using and, and shooting up and basically going unconscious practically out there in a park. Right. Uh, we're not at that. Um, but what our guys are being uh, attentive to is things that are in plain view during um, domestic disputes, uh, traffic stops. What is in plain view that our officers can see and identify that associates uh, those items with drug use, then that gives us the probable cause to either get a search warrant or uh, make an arrest, depending on the situation. So it's more of an opportunity and being aware of what to look for and then taking action. I know in the past, whether it's been uh, discussions with you or the former sheriff, there's also been talk about escalating violence in the community, whether it's the formation of gangs or uh, more infiltration from folks from other areas looking to, to come to Sheboygan County. Any trends we're seeing there? Um, nothing that is any different than what we've been seeing over the course of the last few years where uh, certainly the, the serious crimes seem to be gang on gang uh, with the city's shooting that they had that led to the death of the, the, one, the one man. Um, I don't think uh, that things are any worse than they were. We have still the presence of gangs. Um, there will be retaliation between the gangs uh, for until we get our hands wrapped around this gang issue and, and put together some community strategies to start to disassemble some of these gangs. It's, it's going to be difficult and it is, it's a community problem. It's just not a law enforcement problem and that's the part I think the community needs to understand that if we're going to combat this, we have to do it together as a community. I've been so proud of the Sheriff's Department and law enforcement in general in this community because, as you know, everyone is being asked to do more with less at all levels of government. Uh, folks are really tightening their belt and, and looking to hold the line. And I know that the Sheriff's Department has had the same number of deputies for a long time. Uh, obviously, you're one of the 20 departments that establish, you know, help establish the budget that uh, Chairman Destruti and the board ultimately adopts. We've been really trying to hold the line on raising property taxes. In fact, mm -hmm. as you know, we've reduced them. With that said, when you continue to have law enforcement needs or emergency response needs, obviously we need to pay the bills. Set the stage for us a little bit. How many staff do you have in the Sheriff's Department and what's your annual budget? We're at uh, approximately 172 employees and we're at $16.8 million for our budget. And as far as I can recall, and I, I've been here 14 years, I know you're going on your second, but I don't believe we've added any deputies in 10 years. I, I know don't, we've had some reorganization here and there, but I don't believe we've added deputies. Is, 
I would have to say you're probably correct on that. Yet when I read your annual report year after year, you know, though I think we're, we're providing effective law enforcement without question, the demands aren't going down, the demands are going up. And another example was the excellent work you and others did just recently with the tragedy we had at the Sheboygan Harbor. Uh, everyone pulled together and, and uh, helped meet the needs there. As, you've, as you look at your last two years as sheriff, or coming on two years, what are some of the changes that you've sought to make and what are some changes you're looking to make in the future? Well, sticking pretty much with my platform with the emphasis on community policing and developing leaders in that in the form of uh, leadership and police organizations training. And um, actually the, the challenge in a department-wide philosophy of community policing actually hasn't really been much of a challenge because it's they haven't really deviated much from that. There's different uh, levels of, of community policing ever since the Lonnie Koenig uh, days when she was sheriff and continued on. We're taking it to the next level. Um, there are some, some things that we're having to do to create that time in order for us to build those partnerships and to start problem solving. That's where the time is going to come into play that will be a challenge and people are going to be asked to prioritize what's important to them. There is going to be a survey going out. We want to know what's important to them because we have to start freeing up some of the deputies' time so that we can identify community issues and then build partnerships in solving those. Uh, so that will be one of the challenges uh, that we will continue to uh, to work on and um, really move forward with. Leadership and police organizations after the spring of 2013, all of our staff will have gone through the three week course of leadership and police organizations. We're starting to uh, speak and walk the walk of leadership and police organization fundamentals that are taught uh, it's, it's been very rewarding to hear how some of the supervisors are recognizing problems or issues within their work group and then understanding the root cause and then putting together a leader strategy to solve that. And it has actually, I think, been reflective of those out in the road seeing that, you know what, we're changing. and. Things are being handled much differently now with greater understanding of what's really causing this problem. So um, it's going to take a while, though. All this stuff doesn't happen overnight, and that is part of my challenge personally is the frustration that this change doesn't happen fast enough. And i got to come to grips with that, and I keep reminding myself two terms, Todd, two terms, because <laughs> then we'll be where I really want to see it. Final question before I turn it over to Roger, and I know he wants to ask you a few more questions about community policing as well. Set the stage for our viewers a little bit. What are the um, divisions that are predominantly associated with the Sheriff's Department, their main focuses of concern? Um, certainly corrections is the, uh, the biggest work group within our department and probably doesn't get as much of attention because they are working in the detention center and nobody really sees them out in the community. Uh, their job is to keep their, the inmates safe and secure. That is their job, that is their role and their responsibility to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, then we have dispatch, another work group that is unseen, unsung heroes uh, to handle those stressful calls that come in and then being able to respond and clearly think to get first responders out there or police personnel or whatever the case may be and, and in, in the case of last weekend, the dive team. So, with that being said, those are two work groups along with uh, support services, another unsung group of individuals that do not get the praise for everything it is they do behind the scenes. Uh, then certainly we have the patrol uh, deputies that do a fantastic job of, of uh, you know, attending to the calls for service out there in the community and, and uh, taking a proactive approach in preventing crime. Then we also have civil process. This is one where as not as visible as patrol, but still has a presence. They're delivering the, the legal paperwork from our judicial, judiciary. Um, not the most pleasant type of work because usually they're, they're doing an eviction or foreclosure. Uh, and then we have our, uh, 
our detectives, uh, certainly in an important role within a law enforcement a agency. And then uh, we also have our um, bailiffs providing the security in the jail, which is also, or security in the courts, which is also the responsibility of the sheriff's office. Excellent, excellent. Roger. Uh, Todd, I know that you're building on the philosophy of community policing within the sheriff's department uh, and building uh, relationships and partnerships. Would you describe to the viewers uh, what community policing is and what it looks like in their communities? Community policing, in a nutshell, is getting law enforcement back involved in the community and the community back involved in law enforcement. That's it in a nutshell. And the way we do that is by building relationships. That is reaching out and working together to identify community issues, community problems, just not the problems what we as law enforcement think the community has. It's reaching out to the community and asking, what are your concerns in your community, in your neighborhood? and then working together in solving them. So uh, the most recent we had um, received a phone call from a, uh, an area church that is very concerned about the recent shootings. So now here's where community policing kicks in. We made a point of uh, being sure that we have a presence uh, with some upcoming events but also we took it the next step. We asked for the township deputy to make contact with the leaders from that church and start building a rapport with them and start to build some knowledge on when do they meet, who to contact if they have some concerns of somebody that is just not acting right within the congregation, things of that nature. We wanna build that level of trust so kind of as an early detection system that if somebody has got a concern about somebody in the church, they have somebody they can go to in confidence and share that concern. That's the kind of rapport we want to have with our citizens throughout the county. And that's going to be a long, a long process, of course. But Along those same lines, what expect, expectations do you have of your staff and the citizens in those each individual community? Uh, from the staff, I expect that they, they identify root causes and solve problems and get away from the reactive traditional law enforcement. We want to start becoming proactive, looking for roots to problems and solving them. When it comes to the, the community component and what I expect out of them is for them to start solving some of their own problems. I think uh, the community over the course of the last few decades have become very reliant on law enforcement to solve their problems. Well, we don't have to be solving the problems. They can call the neighbor or walk over and talk to the neighbor and, and ask them to politely turn down their music. Uh, or they can, they can also be the, the eyes and ears for the community and the neighborhood watch kind of concept, not spying on your neighbor, but not being afraid to report criminal and suspicious behavior, uh, to come forward with information that may assist investigators in a crime. That is a civic duty incumbent on the citizens of Sheboygan County, and I expect them to, to follow through with it. If we're going to maintain the level of safety and, and um, the quality of life that we're accustomed to. Is there any additional uh, expense or funds that are coming in to help offset those expenses? There is no expenses. It's really a, a different way of doing business that's a philosophy. So what, you know, the one thing is, is for politicians or our county board supervisors to understand, we're not going to necessarily have numbers to, to always justify our manpower. We're going to start really uh, evaluating performance based on time. Stats is an easy number to look at to justify numbers, but are we really solving problems as a law enforcement agency? So we're going to be doing things differently to, to really um, justify our manpower based on the time that they spend solving problems and taking proactive approaches to things, because not everything is gonna have a number, and that's the difficult part. And that's where it's important for, for community leaders to understand we're not always going to have numbers for you. We're going to be basing our efforts on outcomes versus outputs. So it's a little different approach. 
I, I know we have um, several um, towns and villages that that have contracted services at their request and provide these services from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, how does this impact them? Well, I'm gonna let them gauge that as time goes on, but what I foresee coming up is where township deputies are going to get to the point that they're going to become very uh, good at identifying problems and root causes that it will start to cause, I think, some to scratch of the head, why do we still need some of these hours? Because it was my understanding these contracts were created because of problems um, and the, what should I say, I guess the, the thought process of adding more manpower into the community, more hours, would kind of put a cap on the problem. Well, the approach of community policing and problem solving is that we're going to identify the root cause of that problem and we're going to solve it. We're not going to add more hours into that problem. We're going to identify it and either eliminate it, reduce the harm, uh, refer it to another agency or reduce its frequency. So we've got a goal in mind there that's not going to uh, necessarily involve a constant um, group of individuals to monitor the situation because that to me is is uh, not beneficial. I know we've talked about some uh, possible challenges and you spoke about uh, some of the issues that are coming up but uh, with these increased uh, challenges uh, what's the impact on our detention center and are there different uh, alternatives to uh, the detention center and how close are we to full right now? Well we have um, 227 today that are currently in the jail. So we're, we're still sitting pretty good. This is the time of the year that no, normally spikes, July, August, uh, this population spikes. We're still in good uh, with being able to handle our population and with some of the challenges that we see in the community. Uh, as time goes on, um, some of these folks are going to need more services outside of jail. And I guess that's one of the concerns I have is for some of these folks that are in jail for chemical dependencies, what are they receiving outside of jail mm -hmm. in the form of services that gets them on the right track so they're not going back to jail? Mm -hmm. We can handle the, we're a bit, right now we're able to handle the populations that, that we're experiencing. Um, and then we also have another program, uh, the Work Ender program that we'll be working on and hopefully implementing by the end of the year. That puts us in a pretty good position of being able to handle the, the, uh, the influx of inmates. But where I kind of put the challenge on the community is, is what are we doing for these folks once they're out of jail and they're back into the environment where they're surrounded by these triggers that bring them right back into the very, um, behaviors that got them into jail. That is something that I think collectively as, as a community we need to really start addressing. Well, well done. Um, we only have a few minutes left, but one of the areas I wanted to ask you to comment on a little bit is often Chairman Testrudy and I, and I know you and others in the county and the city, we hear from constituents, what does the city and county do to share resources? You know, they should be sharing resources. and. The three of us know that between the county and the city, a lot is shared. There is a lot of cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some examples of where the Sheriff's Department and the City of Sheboygan Police Department are working together? Uh, there's, there's several, and there's several um, scenarios that I can give you. The most recent was uh, uh, the last weekend with the dive team having to be called out for those two gentlemen that were swept into uh, Lake Michigan, there's a perfect example of a working relationship uh, between law enforcement that kind of is automatic. There's that mutual aid agreement that, you know what, we're going to help each other out. We'll worry where county picks up out there on the pier and whether or not it's your jurisdiction or it's ours. We'll worry about that later. Let's, let's right now, let's focus in on what we need to do and that's rescue these folks. So that is always there and the dive team is an example where the city and the county are together on that dive team. Now they've expanded that to actually including support uh, 
from the volunteer fire departments. Uh, Sheboygan Falls is one, Kohler, Cedar Grove, they were involved in that dive call out as support for the dive team and what a great working relationship. Uh, we've got the uh, multi-jurisdictional law enforcement, or uh, the uh, multi-enforcement group, which is a drug unit. There is made up of officers from the city, from the county, and then also Plymouth. Uh, there's an example of a working relationship. Our canine units will work and train together on occasion and, and uh, work together on MEG unit investigations, so they come together. Uh, there are times in big situations such as the R-Way uh, shooting and suicide several years back where both SWAT teams were needed to actually clear that large building. So uh, it was advantageous for us to have two working independent SWAT teams for the purpose of that situation right there. So they came together in a time of, of need there. Um, the uh, investigative, uh, most recently, the, the big investigations with our, our burglar that's currently going through uh, the courts now, those two uh, divisions from the city and, and the sheriff's office, those investigators did a fantastic job of, of uh, really putting together a, a really good burglary case, multiple counts, and working together in, in fine fashion to make that happen. So. Um, where we go from here down the road, you know, it, it's a good question. And I, the working relationship that we have with uh, the city, I think, is a really good working relationship. Certainly, combined dispatch is probably on the forefront of anything else. But certainly, we're uh, Chief Domagowski and myself, we bounce ideas off of each other. So anything is possible down the road. And, we'll and most recently, major investment, what, 1.2, 1.4 million in Spillman, a new computer system that both the Sheriff's Department, the City Police Department, and other law enforcement agencies are relying upon. Yes, and that is going to be a great asset for us to be able to draw data from. Um, it's, it is uh, going to be beneficial for us and in, in down the road having everybody on the same, uh, you know, records management system that we're able to, you know, get that information in a timely manner and at one point of reference. So that's that's good for us. Outstanding, outstanding overview. And if if you had if you have more questions or you heard something you'd like to learn a little a little more about, don't hesitate to contact Sheriff Todd Preby or or his excellent staff because there's certainly a lot going on. And it's nice to end on such a positive note about all the good work going on between the city PD and the uh, sheriff's department. And of course, Sheriff Preby has helped bring that together even more more strongly because of his role having worked now in both organizations. And uh, we didn't have really time to get into, but we're definitely working on combined dispatch. The three of us have been meeting with city representation on that, discussing that further. And our hope is, is that we may be able to come up with a win-win proposal. So Todd, thank you so much for joining us today. And on behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, thank you for joining us next month. Our finance director, Terry Hansen, will be here to talk about the budget process and some good news there as well. So until then, thanks for joining us.